Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today we are talking about accessories, attachments, and add-ons for your 4R tractors. Could be your 4M, could be a Kubota Grandel, or anything in that rough frame size. The large compact tractors, something roughly six foot wide at the back end, could be five and a half, six, six and a half, right in that ballpark there, but hydrostatic machines, the biggest compacts you can get. Recently, I did a list on the 1025R or similar size subcompact tractors. Gonna do the same thing here. Start pretty much at the cheapest, you know, five, ten dollars, and then work our way on up to the expensive thousand dollar or higher attachments for the machine. I know a lot of you guys watching already have four series tractors or something similar. So if you have an attachment, an accessory, an add on, some way to customize your machine, leave a comment down below. That'll help us all out. So if you enjoy what you see here in this video, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button right down below and make sure you read to the description right underneath the video you're going to find all sorts of helpful links down there for cool tractor products or head on over to goodworkstractors.com let's get to it Again, we're going cheapest to most expensive. So cheapest upgrade that we have is actually gonna be just a little a drain plug. It's a PVC test plug and tractors are limited on storage. Not many places to add tools or just little areas to store anything and bring it along with you in the field or in the woods. So every piece of available space is valuable. So you get a little test plug like this right here. Very easy, I'll post links down below of course, but this one is uh, three inches. You just measure the diameter and they make these plugs in all sorts of different diameters to match your machine, but you just simply put it in there and as you tighten this up, it's gonna squeeze this piece of rubber and make it expand out and that's what's gonna kind of hold it in place. So if you wanna store chain or strap or you think of something else creative you wanna leave inside here, it's a good place, it's out of the way. You don't need to access it very often, but when you need it, you know it's there. Now, something I haven't added on to my 4066R yet, but a really nice thing to do. I do have one on my 1025R, I'll show you right now, but just a steering wheel knob spinner. Easy way to upgrade your steering wheel, make it uh, turn really tight, especially like out here. Uh, I have a lot of tight turns to make, or if you're mowing your lawn or whatever else, but nice feature to have. They already have power steering on all these tractors, so that's also going to make it a lot easier, but I just find it a convenience feature that for 15, 20 bucks, somewhere in that ballpark, you can add one on. Nice, easy upgrade. So next up, mirrors are gonna be a really good add-on. If you have a cab tractor, we got a solution for you there. If you have an open station, there's gonna be a solution as well. I'm gonna show you in just a minute. You can mount it right to this hole that's in the top of the loader um, arm here as well. But this option right here is gonna be available only from John Deere. I don't personally have a solution for you there. Um, a set, you know, one for each side, I think is around the 200 and some dollar ballpark. So we're kind of going out of order from the cheapest to most expensive. A little bit more economical option will be getting the version that mounts to this loader hole right here even with an extension bracket on it so let's show you that as well on my 1025r you're going to see i do have uh, the same holes that are on this loader frame the one series the two series the three r series the four series all have the holes on the top of the loader arm so that makes it really convenient to bolt mirrors right to it um, you can get these grab handles as well if you want to and the mirror bracket you can see you can get kind of maximize your value right there so the mirror can be installed directly to this hole on an open station that's not too bad because you can see right around on a cab though it's kind of in the way if you want to go to muds customs a link down below you can get the bracket as well which you can rotate this bracket all the way out so this could extend out here and really see a lot better behind you and you can also get these grab handles uh, from muds customs you get five percent off with code gwt the mirrors i can sell you so the mirror here with the nuts and the bolts sometimes you have to get a, a washer or a, a different size um, a bolt to go through just depending on your exact loader setup. So the mirrors are a great cheap add-on for a couple of reasons. Number one, safety. If you are traveling you know, down a public road or even if you're in your yard and backing up, it's nice to be able to see behind you. You always want to turn over your shoulder when you can, but just to have the, the visual right there all the time is very convenient. And same thing with using three-point attachments. You get these things adjusted just right. You can see what you're mowing behind you. You can see what you're tilling. You can see your three-point spreader working or your sprayer. Very convenient without having to constantly have your neck or your back turned around and facing the other way. So for the mirrors, go to goodworkstractors.com. I can help you out with that. But if you want to get the bracket or the grab handles, go to mudscustoms.com and get 5% off. One of the pretty inexpensive options that I always do when I get a new tractor that I'm going to keep, whether it's the 1025 or the 4066 or anything else, upgrade the headlight bulbs. Just the bulbs themselves, not the whole fixtures, but from a halogen to an LED, 
do the same thing. It gets a little bit more expensive if you have a cab tractor with the, uh, the front work lights and the rear work lights as well, because you have six total bulbs instead of just the two, but it's a pretty easy upgrade to do. You just pop the old headlight bulbs out and plug the new ones in. These things have been selling for years. You know, I don't sell these myself. I do just post a link right to Amazon where you can buy them. They're right around the $25 mark for a pair. So for your headlights, about 25 bucks, 25 and then 25. So if you have a cab, about 75, maybe 80 bucks, something like that wrapped up into it. But a lot of great feedback over the years on this cheap upgrade. So there's a link down below to where you can buy them on Amazon. Next up, an actual John Deere toolbox. This is a steel toolbox, not a plastic version. Um, now, when I got this 4066R, I bought this used and it had, you can see kind of tucked underneath here, a toolbox mounting plate. And that was before I had the deluxe grill guard on here. We're gonna to get to that in just a second, but um, this mounting plate is made to attach right to the toolbox. Pretty sweet design. The downside was the fact that I think this was originally intended uh, for a larger tractor, like the five and the six and the seven series tractors. And the original owner maybe had just found these holes lined up and made it work. That's my hypothesis, because when it was mounted on here, you couldn't quite open the lid the whole way. It ran into this um, cross member that's on the main grill guard. So what we're gonna do now that we have this deluxe grill guard installed is find uh, some longer bolts, maybe double up or triple or whatever. We're gonna lengthen out the spacers that are in there and have it mounted right in front. It looks like there's just enough space, maybe give or take an inch of extra space to avoid uh, the torque tube when you're raising and lowering your loader as well. But again, storage is at a premium. So that toolbox is around 70 bucks, I believe. I don't know how much the bracket is, maybe another 20 or 30, you know, get some longer bolts and make it work. But storage is at a premium on these tractors. So if you can have a pretty good toolbox like this that can easily be taken on and off of the tractor, bring your tools with you and out into the field if you need them, hey, it's hard to beat that. So the bigger your machine gets, the more greasing that it needs. You know, on the loader, on all the attachments for the front and the back, there just starts to be a lot of grease points on there. So get yourself a good greasing system. The traditional systems are great as well if you already have those on hand, but if you're looking for something new, looking for an upgrade, whether it's the pistol grip style grease gun, or if you choose to go with the electric style of the grease gun, loopshuttle.com, you can go right to their website. You can custom order exactly what you want with the style of the gun, the grease that you want, the quantity, the style of the nozzle as well. So it's completely customizable the best part is you get five percent off with code GWT next up you'll see this red hunk of steel in between the green hunks of steel and that is called a quick hitch so this is the Spico quick hitch so what makes this quick hitch special and different from all the rest on the market is that it doesn't use bushings these things right here okay they come with a little roll pin and two of these that you have to put on every single three-point attachment that you have that you want to connect to the quick hitch if that sounds confusing you're not alone why do you have to add this to this to make this work. It's very confusing. So avoid all that headache, avoid the additional cost, get a Spico quick hitch, goodworkstractors.com, works with the four series, the three series, the two series, the one series, any category one three point hitch. This is the kind of product that we ship all over the country all the time. It ships via UPS ground, so it can go right to your house. You don't need to worry about having it on a skid and you know a big semi truck or anything like that. So go to goodworkstractors.com to get more information and email us at goodworkstractors at gmail.com. Hey, circling back to this deluxe grill guard, this is a pricey option for what it is. However, I feel like one of the things these tractors lack is protection, you know, both up front, you know, where a lot of things could come running into it pretty easily. Same thing with underneath the tractor. I think skid guards need to be an option. They're skid plates of some kind, but at least there is an option here for the deluxe grill guard. This insert alone right here, this mesh insert is like 360 or $370. So it is very pricey. However, if you shove a stick or a branch right through uh, the screen here and into the radiator and anything behind there, you could have a really bad day in your hand. So I guess it depends how you look at things. If you're gonna be extra cautious or if you're not gonna be in that kind of an application, maybe you don't have to worry about an accessory or a, an upgrade such as this. But if you're in the woods or a lot of hairy situations, maybe using a grapple a lot or a bucket where things can come flying back, this could be a worthwhile investment for you. One of the few things that pretty much every tractor owner needs, at least if you have a front end loader, is gonna be counterweight, something on the backside to offset what you have going on up front. You can accomplish counterweight typically through a combination of means because seldom is one version of that counterweight gonna be sufficient. So you have four things going on that you could do. First, you have the invisible counterweight, which is gonna be liquid ballast inside your tires. It's a very cheap, very economical way to get a lot of ballast weight. It's a very good starting point. Another option is gonna be wheel weights. And you can see on a four series tractor like this, you can actually triple stack the wheel weight. So 
anything that's cast iron, you know, whether it's suitcase weights or wheel weights, it's going to be a pretty expensive option, but you don't tie up your three-point hitch when you have liquid ballast and wheel weights like what you see here, so it allows you to have free space back here to put a useful or usable attachment. You could always use a three-point attachment as ballast weight as well. There's not really anything wrong with that, but there are pros and cons just because it's something that could be more easily damaged or it could make it more cumbersome to, to turn around or navigate or maybe run into something else and damage that too. Like with anything, there's a trade-off. Just something to consider. Here's a good example of a suitcase weight setup on my 1025R. You do have to get a weight bracket to hang it on. This weight bracket here is from heavyhitch.com. You know, if you're gonna have a big four series, you probably wanna look at a double weight bracket that allows you to hang 16 of these weights on it, both on the inside rail and on the outside rail because you need a whole lot of ballast weight on those big tractors. So this weight bracket is from heavyhitch.com. That is one of the locations you can get 5% off with code GWT. One of the other great features about this weight bracket is it has a built-in receiver. So it becomes a little bit more versatile that way. And as always, you're gonna see another Spico quick hitch mounted on the 1025R. It does work with the heavy hitch weight bar as well. Now, besides the liquid ballast in your tires, the other very cheap form of ballast weight is a ballast box. So a really good ballast box option, there's not a lot of options out there, is the Titan ballast box. It has built-in tool holders in it. It's got a trap door, so if you do fill it full of sand or, say, uh, gravel, you can open that door and just have it drain out. It's got a built-in two-inch receiver. It even has fork slots on there, and it's also quick hitch compatible. There's gonna be a version available in green and black as well. It's the best value on the market right now. You know, the John Deere or the Land Pride ballast boxes are just a, a square hunk of steel without any other accessories or add-ons of any kind. So you might as well get something that's a little bit more bang for the buck. Eventually, I will have a superior ballast box available on the market with a lot more functionality at a pretty solid price point that will be made in America as well. We're working on that. We're in prototype phase number one right now, so it's a ways from happening. But in the meantime, if you're looking for a good economical way to get ballast weight, get one of these bad boys. It'll weigh about 700, maybe to 800 pounds, depending on your material. A lot of weight for the money. Now, a lot of these 4R tractors and the Kubotas as well are gonna have at least one rear remote on your machine. However, what you're staring at is called a hydraulic multiplier, and it can allow you to turn that one rear hydraulic remote into up to five additional hydraulic remotes. You don't have to get a hydraulic multiplier that's this large, you can get one that just adds on one additional function or two or three or four or six additional functions. You get the idea. But for me, I have a three-point mount of snowblower on my tractor right now that requires three hydraulic functions of its own. Plus, I have a hydraulic top and tilt kit, and I have another hydraulic function going up front. So I have a lot of hydraulics going on back here, and so a cheap way to get all that additional hydraulic circuitry is to go the route of a hydraulic multiplier instead of adding on factory options that can be thousands of dollars. I got this large hydraulic multiplier for around $1,000 that gives me all of this additional capability, including a circuit controller to be mounted inside the cab. So for those of you that don't have any additional hydraulics besides just the raising and lowering and curling and rolling functions, you can look to Summit Hydraulics to get a diverter kit. That's gonna be another hydraulic option to add onto your tractor. It's a very inexpensive way to go about it versus going the factory option to add on the third function control. This is gonna be a good solution. You get 5% off with code GWT, whether you're looking for a diverter kit or it could be a hydraulic multiplier as well. Go to the link down below in the description. It'll take you right to Summit Hydraulics website. And again, 5% off code GWT. One of the attachments that's starting to grow in popularity are going to be the HLA bale spears. And you're going to see this version here happens to be the most practical and economical. You're going to have a couple of fixed lower points on either version. You're going to see a skid steer quick attach and a John Deere quick attach version. You are going to see there's an additional hole that's up top to mount the long replaceable spear. We have them off right now just for shipping purposes, but it just goes right on in place. You just take the nut off, put it through, and tighten it back up. Pallet forks are a very popular option to add onto your tractor. This set right here is gonna be a 4,200 pound rated set. You're gonna have this integrated headache rack that's kind of a deluxe headache rack or um, kind of crash guard that you have. You don't have to get it with this, it's an option, but I chose to go the 4,200 pound route for my tractor because I wanted 60 inch long tines as well just to have that extended reach and a little bit better visibility. You could also get away with the 2,000 pound rated forks because of the fact that they're typically rated about 20 inches or 24 inches out from center, all right? so. This is the base of your load. Out here is the midpoint typically, that 20 or 24 inch mark, and this is where they're rating that 2,000 pound limit. Your loader, depending on your machine, is gonna lift maybe 1,800 to 24, 2,500 pounds, could be slightly more for various models, but 
I've used the 2,000 pound forks on my 4066R for a long time. They're rated with some margin, right? So they're not gonna break with a 2,000 pound load, but I chose again to go to the 60 inch tines. I had to go up to the 4,200 pound rating. Now we can get these forks in the John Deere Quick Attach, Skid Steer Quick Attach, and Global Quick Attach, and even custom pin down attachments. What you see here is my own creation. This is a stump bucket. It goes right in place of your loader bucket and is great for what the name suggests. Digging out stumps, maybe ripping out landscaping, digging holes to plant trees, some trenching as well. A lot of options that folks are finding for this attachment. Now this particular version is gonna be for smaller equipment such as subcompacts and smaller compacts up to 32 horsepower. There is a HD version that's in the works as well for your larger compacts such as the three and the four series or Grand L's. So that'll be coming out very soon, available at goodworkstractors.com. Make sure you check it out. Okay, now we're gonna get into a bunch of attachments, both for the front end, for the back end of the tractors as well, kind of based on what we have on hand here along with a few others sprinkled in. The overarching theme with attachments is you typically want them to be a about the width of the tractor or maybe a little bit wider. You know, you go too wide and things get maybe too cumbersome or if it's PTO driven, it could be just too much attachment for the tractor. But so a good rule of thumb to keep in mind is just match the width or slightly bigger. Most of these attachments we talk about are gonna be somewhere in that two to maybe four or $5,000 range. There will be some outliers that could be a little bit cheaper. There could also be some that are a lot more expensive. That snowblower back there, for example, set up the way that it is, is over $8,000. Let's start with the snow pusher, for example, right up front on my 4066, 72 inches wide. This is an HLA 2500 series. You start to get to these substantial tractors and you need bigger pieces of equipment. They're naturally gonna cost more. There's a lot more steel involved here just to get to the size it needs to be and also the thickness and support that's required to take the force and brunt that's coming behind the pusher itself. I've done a lot of videos on these HLA snow pushers. I really do think that they are superior to what else is on the market. You know, I can choose to sell a lot of attachments and there's gonna be certain things from manufacturers that I will carry and there's gonna be other items that I just don't bother to because I want all the equipment I sell to meet that kind of trifecta, you know, of price, of quality, and of features. And this for sure makes that list. We've got an MK Martin pull type snowblower on the back. This is 78 inches wide. If you look at it, you swear it's about six foot wide, but you can see where kind of lining up with the rough width of the tractor itself is right where you want to be in that sweet spot. I don't see a, a need to go wider than that, although this could run the 87 inch variant if you wanted to. The cool thing about this snowblower is that it is a pull type. So you can see this auger is facing forward. You can drive right over the snow with this machine versus having to turn around, look this way and drive backwards. It's a a total game changer as far as three-point snow blowers go. I have this thing kind of outfitted with a lot of different hydraulic options that are on here so I can show it to you in videos and check out those videos. I've done several on them as well, but it's got a hydraulic uh, rotation on it, a hydraulic deflector, a hydraulic lift back drag. It's really got a lot of options. You don't have to get it with all of those. You can kind of customize it and tailor it to how you want to have it set up to meet your needs in your tractor. So while we're here, I get asked about these tires all the time. This is a Goodyear. You might hear it called a Titan because that's who actually makes the uh, the tractor tires for Goodyear, but this is the R14T tread pattern. The size that I have on my 4066R is a 16.9 by 24. This is a radial version. You can get these in different tire sizes as well. For some of the smaller tires, they are gonna be a bias, not a radial, but these are gonna be the radial for the fronts and the backs. It's a kind of a hybrid between an R1 and an R4, uh, safe on lawns, really good in snow, really good in mud. So a very good all-purpose tire that a lot of folks are upgrading to. So I've been running these for about six months now in the fall and in the winter time. Nothing but good things to say so far, but they are not a cheap option. If I recall correctly, it was somewhere in the 1800 to $2,000 ballpark to outfit these rims with these new tires. So if you're in the market for a new set of tires, I would suggest checking out MillerTire.com. It's a place that you can get these tires from or other tread patterns if you're looking for it. And even better than that, you get 5% off using code GWT. Here you're gonna see the Tower River snow plows. These are 96 inches wide. I'd suggest either the 84 or the 96 inch variants for the four series size tractors. We've got a skid steer quick attach and a John Deere quick attach here side by side. They will come standard as a manual angle, although you can add on a hydraulic angling kit if you want to. These were a very popular seller this winter. We're actually down to just a very small handful left over as we uh, come towards spring, but very well built. This is our second year selling them. We've been selling Tar River equipment for a long time. This was a really popular item when they introduced them last year, and uh, we expect this to continue to grow in popularity. You'll see this is the WorkSaver double jaw grapple. This is six foot wide. 
you see the general theme going on here, but this is a great grapple for a four series tractor or your Grand L series machines as well. But the double jaw is really nice. When you get to this size, you can, you can absorb that additional weight that a system like this has, um, but you can clamp at different points. So if you have like a log or an, an uneven pile that's maybe bigger over here and narrow over here, they'll clamp down at a different level to get a really tight uh, grip on the load to make it nice and secure while you're traveling along. It's a very popular style as well with a long flat base on the bottom and these jaws that kind of reach down on the top and then clamp down and keep it tight to your tractor. One of the attachments I am really excited about trying out this spring is going to be this hydraulic flail mower. It's hydraulically offset, so you can swing it out this way with a lever. You can also tilt it down like this or up like this. I can't wait to use it. So you don't need to get a version that requires the hydraulic options that are on here. You can get a fixed flail, you can get a fixed offset, or you can get a manual offset as well. There's different options that are out there, but um, if you have the options, why not? You know, I'm in a cab tractor. These things aren't light. When they get as big as this one is right here so if you can do everything with a couple levers uh, from the cab or from the operator seat even if it is an open station it's going to be a lot more convenient although it is going to be a little bit pricier of course so last year was my first time ever using a flail mower and i used it on my 1025r and i had a really great experience with that um, it was nice and quiet it's compact it's a lot closer to the machine than a brush hog they are a little bit more pricey there's no doubt about it but um, you can get them with y blades or hammer blades there's a lot of different ways to customize them i have more videos that are going to be coming out soon comparing uh, flail mowers to brush hogs or even the different kinds of flail mowers as well but if you're in the market for a brush hog you want something a little bit cheaper you don't need anything as fancy as what you have going on here we can help you out with those as well. You know, you can get a six foot or a seven foot brush hog, even into bat wing uh, brush hogs or rotary cutters, you might hear them called. Uh, we can get them from MK Martin. We can get them from Rhino. Whatever you need in different sizes, color configurations, we can help you out. Just visit Goodworks Tractors or just send me an email. Okay, so we're using this box blade here as an example. You're gonna want a six or a seven foot box blade for your four series or your Grand L machine, but good representation of, of what you're going to see. You're going to have a blade on the outside and on the inside along with some scarifier shanks. This is a really great all-purpose grading. Say you have some really big ruts with a lot of material to drag from point A to point B or you just really want to change the contour of the ground. This is a good tool for that. You know, land plane is another option. Again, six foot, seven foot are going to be right in that ballpark of what you want to run. Um, even rear blades. You know, you think maybe a six foot flat rear blade would be what you want, but most of the time you're going to angle that blade. So if you angle it, it's going to be narrower overall. So you're going to want to stick with a seven or an eight foot rear blade if you go that route. We've got a couple cedars that are right here. These are great for either, you know, you could plant your lawn if you're looking to overseed or even uh, plant your food plots as well. Now these are four foot Why They are technically a little small for the 4066 or something similar, but I did use this four foot because it's what I had on hand to plant my food plots last fall. Worked just fine besides being a little bit narrower than the tires um, you know it was easier to actually navigate through the woods because I had to go actually right through a, a wood lot to get to my food plots and so without sticking beyond wider than the tractor I didn't have to worry about it hitting trees as I was going by so we can get cedars we can also get no-till drills you know a cedar is going to be something you have to prepare the ground with initially before you can seed it whereas a no-till drill as it says, you don't have to till or work the ground at all. You can just go ahead and plant right away. So we can get these from Tar River. Casco is another great option as well. Get more information on their websites or reach out to us at Goodworks Tractors. We're happy to help you out. You have an Ag Spray three-point mounted PTO driven tank sprayer right here. This is gonna be a 55 gallon. I used this out on my lawn uh, last year. I meant to use it at the Food Plus as well. I just ran out of time, but very good option. You can get a bigger version of this as well if you want to. Uh, for most folks with smaller projects though, the 55 gallon is gonna be more than they need or just enough at least but if you want to get a bigger version you're more than welcome to it comes with the integrated stand everything you see right here with a spray gun as well so you can get this in a couple different setups either with the extendable arms that swing all the way out and fold back in or you can get the boomless version as well that just has uh, a few nozzles right here that spray out and are still going to get you quite a wide spray pattern but i do find this to be a little bit more consistent as far as the spray pattern goes a few more attachments I don't actually have on hand here right now. The first is going to be the Rhino Rebel Tiller. You might have seen the videos I did uh, using a 72 inch tiller on here last fall doing my food plots. That worked very, very well. It went through, I mean, 
a lot of weeds and everything else. Whatever was in its way, it flattened it out and tilled and prepped that ground very well. So a 72 inch or an 84 inch would be a very good model for your tractor. As far as chippers or chippers and shredders go, the Wallenstein is gonna have some really good options for you. Uh, hydraulic self-feed, five inch chipping. You can get those in some various color options and different options that are on there in general. So if you plan to do a lot of customization to your chipper or your chipper shredder, I suggest ordering with plenty of lead time because they are gonna take quite a while to manufacture. And then also the Baumolite stump grinders, those are gonna be a very good, reliable option for you as well. You are gonna have hydraulic options so that you can uh, rotate and control that stump grinder right from the operator seat without having to get off of there and kind of drive the tractor back and forth. So look for the Baumolite stump grinders either at Goodworks Tractors or go right to their website, select the one that you're looking for and just shoot us an email. We're happy to provide you a quote and get your order going. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you own one of these tractors or if you're in the market for one, it gives you an idea of what you want to look for to size it appropriately, to outfit it the way that you want. And maybe you weren't aware of some features or accessories that were available for it. And again, if you already own one of these tractors and you're just looking for some new ideas, we'd love for you to share down below in the comments section with what you find to be a really good attachment accessory or an add-on. So if you did enjoy this video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below and read through the description as well. All sorts of helpful links down there for tractor owners or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks so much for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.